Welcome back to the concluding episode of Climate Crisis, Oceans Are Rising, Part 2 of 2. In today's program, we will learn about the effects that sea level rise, SLR, is having on our coastal communities, how it will affect the world in years to come, and what we can still do about it before it's too late. As 2019 drew to a close, a global collective of 11,258 scientists from 150 countries officially declared our planet to be in a state of climate emergency. One of the climate experts, Dr. Thomas Newsom from the University of Sydney, explained the urgency of the current situation. Scientists have a moral obligation to warn humanity of any great threat. Based on rising global surface temperatures and increases in greenhouse gas emissions, it is clear we have a climate emergency. Dr. Newsom further stated that unless major and long-lasting shifts are made in the way humans contribute to global warming, untold human suffering remains unavoidable. Not only have scientists been warning the world about climate change for the past several years, but many leaders of the island nations have also been speaking out about global warming and the coming crisis that we will all soon face. These leaders have been sharing what has already been happening in their own countries because the effects of sea level rise have already been felt in coastal habitats around the globe for several decades. We did not do any of these things. But if things go business as usual, we will not live, we will die. Our country will not exist. We are not prepared to die. And the Maldives has no intention of dying. We are not going to become the first victims of the climate crisis. Instead, we are going to do everything in our power to keep our heads above the water. We are living on the front line of climate change. Sea level rise is already destroying our low-lying atolls, our crops, our homeland. And of course, we don't want to leave. This is our homeland. We have a saying in Tuvalu and the Polynesian, we are but on one big canoe, planet Earth. The way towards saving the world is saving small islands like Tuvalu first. Tuvalu and the rest of the world will stand up if we work together now, if we don't waste any more time uh, to deny further uh, the actions that have been identified by the scientists. The fate that the people of Tuvalu are facing due to impacts of climate change and sea level rise is not made up, it's not exaggeration, it is real. Let us paddle together. If you save Tuvalu, we save the world. Climate change is not just an issue for the Maldives. Uh, what happens to the Maldives will happen to a quarter of the world's population. And therefore, we must find ways and means of how that can be avoided. We cannot have a situation where uh, a quarter of the world's population is moving uh, from their homes, um, tr trying to find dry land. Uh, and I very much hope and I very much believe that we can do this.
As we have heard from leaders of several island countries, their entire nations could disappear underwater within the next few decades if global emissions are not reversed. Is there a solution? How can we stop sea level rise and other climate crisis? We will find out more after this important message. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to our program as we explore what we can do to avoid further devastating effects of the climate change crisis. A research paper entitled World Sciences Warning of a Climate Emergency was published in the January 2020 issue of Bioscience. The paper, written in collaboration with the American Institute of Biological Sciences, was rectified by 11,258 scientists from 153 countries. It identified six major solutions put forward as the last opportunity we have to reverse the impending climate change crisis. One of the co-authors, Dr. Thomas Newsom, explains the six critical steps to overcome the climate crisis. We suggest six critical steps to tackle the climate emergency. This includes replacing fossil fuels with renewables, reducing climate pollutants such as methane and carbon, protecting and restoring our ecosystems. This means stopping land clearing, reducing meat consumption, moving away from an interest in improving GDP and looking at human health and well-being instead, and also slowing down and stabilizing human population growth. The best news is that there is still time for people, policymakers, and the business community to make the necessary changes to ensure that future generations can enjoy living on planet Earth our only home. What this tells us and what we can no longer ignore with over 11,000 scientists in agreement is, is that the biggest cause of global warming is raising livestock animals. And therefore, the single most important step this world needs to take to is to stop eating animals and to adopt a plant-based lifestyle. You may wonder how we came to this conclusion. Let's take a closer look at four of the six steps proposed so we may further understand. Reducing climate pollutants such as methane and carbon, raising livestock animals is a leading cause of climate change, accounting for an estimated 87% of annual greenhouse gas emissions, protecting and restoring our ecosystems, this means stopping land clearing. Raising livestock animals is the largest cause of global deforestation, as land is cleared for the grazing of livestock or for growing crops to feed the livestock, poultry, and even fish that humans consume. Reducing meat consumption. This includes all forms of animal consumption like beef, pork, poultry, dairy, and fish. Most of these forms of raising livestock animals lead to deforestation and contribute significantly to greenhouse gases.
moving away from an interest in improving GDP, gross domestic product, and looking at human health and well-being. Instead, the consumption of animal products, including dairy, is linked to numerous chronic illnesses, including coronary heart disease, diabetes, breast cancer, prostate cancer, and bowel cancer. As we can see, of the six major proposed solutions, four of them point to raising livestock animals as being the largest contributor. Therefore, stopping this one act is not only something that each person can do literally overnight, but one that will have the greatest